Welcome back, Music Theory 1, to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about harmonic sequence. In our previous video, which was a little while ago now, we talked about harmonic progression. We talked about the ways that chords typically resolve to one another. And so we learned about 5 and 7 that like to resolve to 1, and 2 and 4 that like to resolve to 5 and 7, and all these things. And you can review that video at any time uh, if you'd like to, make, to refresh yourself on those concepts. Today, we're going to talk about harmonic sequence. Harmonic sequence is an alternate way in which chords can progress to other chords, and we're going to learn about what it means today. We use the word sequence in music to describe a repeated pattern that begins each of its repetitions on a different pitch. Sequences can be melodic, when they just consist of one line, and that's one way we hear them often, or they can be harmonic, when they consist of a chord progression. We can listen to a melodic sequence where each repetition starts a note lower. Okay, this is a melodic sequence. The, the pitches that we hear are the same, it's just a, a nice stepwise step pattern that goes up and then down. And each time we hear it, it starts on a different note. This is a melodic sequence. Harmonic sequences are what we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about today, though. Let's look at the most common harmonic sequence that we find in Western music. When we talk about a sequence harmonically, we often talk about the root movement of the sequence. When I say root movement, I'm referring to the intervals in the roots of the chords. Okay, so in this case, for instance, we have an A major triad moving to a D major triad. This is a descending fifth when we talk about the roots of those chords, A going down to D. And this is the start of our most common chord progression, which we call the circle of fifths progression. The circle of fifths progression is a sequential pattern which repeats a similar interval every time. Every time we move our chord down by fifth in the root. And so we can start on an A and then move down to a D. That's the start of our circle of fifths progression, and we can continue that sequence by moving down further, uh, moving our roots down by fifth further along. I've added two more chords to my circle of fifths progression, a G-sharp diminished chord and a C-sharp minor chord. I'm writing a diatonic progression here, which means that all my chords are going to be from my A major scale. And I've continued my pattern. I started with A, going down a fifth to D, and five notes down from D is G-sharp. And if we go five notes down from G-sharp, I end on C-sharp minor. Again, every chord's root is five notes below, and so this is my pattern. This is the pattern. It's just go down five notes. We notice that sometimes we get a resolution that's a little bit unusual. For example, our seven diminished chord has a more typical resolution. It more typically resolves to a one chord. But when we have a sequence, that pattern sort of overrides the way these chords typically resolve. And oftentimes we'll see a sort of unusual resolution or two in our sequences. Let's continue our circle of fifths progression. Here we can see that I've moved one chord further I've added a six chord, an F sharp minor chord. Again, a perfect fifth now below our C sharp. F sharp down five notes from C sharp. And then I've done something that is very typical in music, and you see I've marked my four chord with a star. I've broken off my sequence. Oftentimes when we see a sequence, it will start our phrase, but at some point in the phrase, we will break the sequence and finish with a more typical resolution. Here, a predominant four chord that resolves to a five that resolves to a one. Let's listen to our circle of fifths progression. We're going to be able to hear that repeated pattern at the beginning of the progression, and then when we get to the four chord, we'll hear it break off. A pretty simple chord progression, but a nice illustration of the most common sequence that we can find. 
Let's look at another example that has a little bit more action in it. I've started with a complete progression here. Notice I've changed keys to F major. If we look at our chord progression, we can notice that there is at least one unusual resolution in it. We have a six chord in measure two resolving to a three chord. And that's not a very typical resolution when we're using our common, uh, our common chord progressions, right? Six tends to resolve to a four or to a two chord, but to a three a little bit more unusual. But if we look at our root movements here, if we look at our baseline, we can see that instead we've got a pattern. We've got a pattern, and that pattern is governing the way our chords resolve. Our pattern could be described as going down by a fourth. I go down four notes, and then up by a step. Down a fourth, and up a second. And we can see that we follow that pattern pretty closely for the first couple of measures. We go down four notes to C, and then up a second to D. We go down four notes to A, and then up a second to B flat. We go down four notes to F, and then, uh-oh, I've broken my sequence because I went back to my four and my five. As is typical, I break my sequence near the end of a phrase to give a more strong harmonic resolution. We could describe the sequence as having the roots moving down a fourth and up a second, and notice that I've marked a star by that B-flat chord where I break off my sequence. Let's listen to this sequence in the key of F major. This is a really common one in music, most famously used in Pachelbel's canon. If you've ever been to a wedding or played in a wedding, you might have heard this music very typically. You hear that a lot, right? It's sort of the beginning of that very famous piece of music, one that we see a lot of times in different settings. Let's look at one last one. Here's a sequence in the key of D minor. See if you can't take a look and identify what kind of sequence we've got going on here. What sort of pattern do we have in our bass? How would you describe it in terms of the interval motions? Other questions, where do we break out of our sequence? And where do we see chord progressions with odd resolutions? What resolutions look normal to us? And what resolutions look a little bit unusual to us? All of these are going to be good things to think about. I'll give you a minute, pause the video, see if you can't answer some of those questions. And again, those questions are, how will we describe the root movements here? Where do we break the sequence? And what resolutions in this chord progression are unusual when we look at typical harmonic progression? Let's take a listen to it. I would describe this sequence as having a, a root movement of down a third and up a fourth. We go down a third from D minor to B flat major, and then up a fourth to E diminished. We go down a third from E to C sharp, and then up a fourth from C sharp to F. We go down a third from F to D, and up a fourth from D to G, and then we break our sequence off and move from four to five to finish off with our dominant chord. That's the moment where we break off our sequence as well. What about odd resolutions? Well, we start in a pretty normal place. We move from one to six, which is pretty okay. And then we move to a 2 chord, to a 7 chord, and we would expect that 7 chord to resolve to 1, but it doesn't. It moves up to 3, and 3 moving to 1 is also a little bit unusual. Right here, our sequence kind of takes over. The momentum of that repeating pattern overrides some of the typical resolutions that we would see here. And it isn't until the next measure that we finally break off and move from 4 to 5.
another example of sequence, another example of the ways we're going to be looking at and talking about this way to use harmony. Sequence is something that we find in lots of different musical styles. We find it in classical music from the very, very old to the very, very new. We find it in a variety of different popular styles, including uh, rock and roll music, jazz music, and uh, just sort of traditional American song type of music. And so it's something that we'll see all over the place. Whenever we see chords that are working in an odd way, whenever we see resolutions that are quite unusual, we might want to look and see, are we operating under a pattern? Is that the reason why we're not seeing the typical resolutions of these chords? If so, maybe we've got a sequence. And we can talk about a sequence in terms of the, the pattern, the way the roots of the chords move, the pattern of intervals that happens in the bass. We'll look more at sequences in class, but hopefully this has been a, a good introduction for you. Thank you for watching. Glad to be back on the videos. Moving towards the end of our semester here, and so we've got a lot more exciting stuff to talk about. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time in class.